Maleficent is one of the most terrifying villains ever to grace the silver screen. Her sleek and stylistic design, her murderous intentions, coupled with her petty motivation, these all come together to make the queen of all Disney villains. But who was responsible for putting this queen on her throne? Let's find out. Mark Davis was born on March 30th, 1913 in Bakersfield, California. As a child, he had some unpleasant experiences that sparked his love for art. He was in 26 schools before he was out of high school. Mark's widow, Alice Davis, explains, Whenever Mark would go to a new school, at recess, the boys would circle around him and just beat the heck out of him. That's the way they greeted you. Mark started drawing for the boys and handing the pictures out on the playground. In this way, the boys would take the drawings instead of beating him up. He credits this as what started his artistic career. Mark joined the Disney Studios on December 2, 1935. By late spring of 1936, he was made assistant to Grim Natwick, animating Snow White. Natwick had a team that consisted of three assistants, Davis being the principal of these, and three in-betweeners. Supervising animator Hamilton Lusk also had a Snow White team, and it was not uncommon for conflicts to arise between the two heads. In a nutshell, Natwick saw the princess as being older and more mature. Lusk saw her as more childlike. According to Michael Barrier, author of Hollywood Cartoons, as Davis became aware of the hostility between Lusk and Natwick, he gradually took it upon himself to make the necessary changes in Natwick's drawings. Those changes went beyond the character's proportions to what Davis called a kind of feeling of the character. Natwick, he said, wanted the girl to have a vitality, more than a simple cuteness, and it was this vitality that Davis had to tame. The animator and assistant worked well together. Grimm would say about Mark's help during Snow White, it was like having two right arms. Mark would go on to animate so many characters they couldn't all possibly fit in one video, so instead we'll focus on one of his most terrifying. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Maleficent carries perhaps the most significant presence of any Disney antagonist. A testament to the design, Maleficent's silhouette is iconic and instantly recognizable. I keep a, quite a large art library at home here, and I, I had a book, I think it was printed in Czechoslovakia, on art of the Middle Ages in, in some ways, and there was a, a painting, a, a religious painting, and it was some character uh, had on this black robe, and there was this pattern of, uh, of, of material, and it looked like flames, and that intrigued me, so I, I used that as a part of it. And then with the collar and the points on there, it was kind of trying to get a bat look to her. And of course the horns, just because it's kind of the devil uh, image, so she frightened everybody to half to death. <laughs> Lucas O. Seastrom writes in the Disney Family Museum article, A strong example of artistic compromise on Sleeping Beauty comes in the case of the villainess. Davis's original design featured red trim on her flaming gown. Eve and Earl, with final dictation and character design, requested a change to lavender. Rather than grudgingly dispute Earl, as other animators did, Davis immediately agreed. Purple was more subtle, subdued to match the noble reserve of Maleficent's presence. Red was too blunt in its visual cue, too direct of a read for the audience. Maleficent was a study in subtlety at her best. What a pity Prince Philip can't be here to enjoy the celebration. <laughs> Come, we must go to the dungeon and cheer him up. The old-fashioned Disney characters did not look good over my backgrounds, Earl would say. With Davis's animation, the characters did not stand out from the backgrounds as had been a tradition. They stood with the backgrounds. It was an artistic cooperation not seen as yet in Disney animation on such a scale. You weren't wanted. Not what? Oh. oh dear, what an awkward situation. During the production of Sleeping Beauty, Mark met Alice Estes, a Disney legend in her own right. In 1947, Alice received a scholarship to the prestigious Chouinard Art Institute a training ground for many Disney artists. With Alice's goals of becoming an animator crushed due to the male dominance of the field, Mrs. Chenard herself assigned Alice to become a costume designer and gave her the added task of assisting the new animation teacher, 
Mark Davis. Following graduation, Estes ascended to prominence as an accomplished lingerie designer, with a reputation for her command of fabrics and patterns. Estes's reputation as a fashion designer preceded her. To her surprise, she received a call one day from her former animation instructor, Mark Davis, asking her to design a dress for the live-action model of Princess Aurora for Sleeping Beauty. Alice married Davis in 1956, eventually working with him at the Walt Disney Studios and becoming one of the first female Imagineers. She designed costumes for several Disneyland attractions, including Pirates of the Caribbean and Carousel of Progress, many based on her husband's whimsical drawings. After Sleeping Beauty wrapped, Disney brought Mark onto his projects in Disneyland, and in the year 2000, Mark Davis passed away in Glendale, California. As an artist, Mark Davis could do anything. He was an artist's artist, whose talent was a cornerstone of Disney's world. One of Mark Davis's famous quotes reads, I consider myself an artist first, but I enjoy expressing myself in different ways. Whether I paint, animate, or develop a Disneyland attraction, it's all about the creative spirit and finding solutions to artistic challenges. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it, and if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked in the description. We hope to see you in another Dizography.